And the worst kept secret in in this industry for the last three weeks or so is the AMD Ryzen 7 9800 X3D CPU, which is due to launch November 7th. That's the rumor, but come on. Let's just say it's going to happen. It's their ace in their sleeve, and they all they were sitting on this to push back against Intel's. Uh, oh, speaking of Intel, dead on arrival there. Their uh, reviews are in. If you want to go to your favorite other YouTube channels, such as you know um, Hardware Unboxed and Gamers Nexus and Chase Two Cents, it's it's pretty bad for Intel right now. But speaking of uh, AMD, let's talk about these guys here. Uh, this is from uh, WCCF Tech. Got a couple from WCCF Tech here. Lots of AMD news. Uh, according to Geekbench benchmarks, we've got a potential 22% uplift uh, over the 7800 X3D. Our, the article continues that the uh, 9800 X3D CPU has leaked out in the latest Geekbench benchmarks, showing strong single and multi-core performance uplifts over the 7800 X3D. Uh, there's been a couple of leaks here regarding the chip over the last couple of weeks, and here's the uh, first recap of the specs that we've got going on here. In terms of specifications, uh, it'll pack 8 cores, 16 threads, 32 meg of L3 cache, and a uh, additional 64 megabytes of SRAM uh, stacked on top of the CCD for a total of 96 megabytes of L3 and 8 megabytes of L2. The CPU will feature a 120 watt TDP. The CPU features a 4.7 gigahertz base clock that boosts to 5.2, which is a nice uptick over the 7800 X3D's 4.2 base and uh, 5 gigahertz uh, boost clock. I see about, I usually get around uh, 5,050, 5,100 megahertz sometimes when I'm boosting because I'm on, uh, I'm got this undervolt going on. So that's not too bad. The, the processor was tested in two configurations. Uh, one with an Asus ROG Crosshair X870 uh, E Hero and uh, 48 gigabytes of DDR5. And the other was BioStars uh, X870E Valkyrie with 48 gig of uh, 8,000 megatransfers per second memory. So in both tests, the CPU boosted to 5.25 to 5.30, which is beyond its boost clock. Single core score, Geekbench 3305, 18221 for the multi-core. This test was uh, October 24th, which was just yesterday. And this was uh, on the Asus uh, motherboard. As per performance, as you can see, 3305 and 182021 in multi-core. Uh, this puts the single core performance up to 22% faster than the 7800X3D and multi-core up 20% faster. Previous reports have also indicated full overclocking support, and it looks like Zen 5 3D V cache is going to be a very strong positioned product. So what we've got here, the, these are the uh, comparisons to others, other CPUs. We've also seen a tuned result of the 9800X3D running at 5.6 across all cores. The CPU was 35% faster than the 7800X3D. And we can expect some really nice gains with overclocking. Uh, overclocking. Um, considering the Intel Core Ultra 200S Arrow Lake CPUs have already been launched and the performance showcase for them isn't that great, it, it's dead on arrival. <laughs> Arrow Lake is dead on arrival. It looks like uh, AMD is going to once again retain its CPU gaming leadership with strong performance and gain great efficiency. The launch of the chip, the launch is expected November seventh, according to uh, leaks and and whatnot. I think it's a given. <laughs> it's the worst kept secret right now in this industry. 
And uh, to keep up with the topic, AMD Agisa 1202A, this BIOS has just dropped for a lot of uh, AM5 motherboards from the uh, 800 series all the way up and, and the 600 series. I've got it installed in Edna right now. Uh, it comes with performance optim optimizations for Ryzen 9000 X3D CPUs, including the 9800 X3D. So you, you got to check this out. Um, AMD's Agisa 1202A uh, BIOS firmware has now rolled out to various motherboard vendors and packs Ryzen 9000 X3D CPU specific optimizations. A few days ago, AMD teased its next generation 9000 X3D CPUs, which will make their official debut with the 9800 X3D. Uh, let's see. With the launch with just a few weeks away, motherboard vendors are now starting to roll out the first uh, firmware, which incorporates performance optimizations. As you can see here right now, this is a screen grab of the uh, uh, Aorus X870E Master. And it shows the uh, F4E Beta BIOS dated October 16th. And if you look here, it does show the Exisa. 1202A, but right here. This is what I want to talk about. The X3D Turbo Mode support. Okay, Gigabyte is the first motherboard vendor to release its latest BIOS on this, and this option is now enabled even on my 7800 X3D. I haven't used it. There's a reason why. And uh, according to this article here, the latest BIOS is available for both 800 and 600 series motherboards. But the best part is it comes preloaded with Gigabyte's new X3D mode turbo mode feature, which is an easy mode. When you go into your BIOS, on, uh, when you go into the BIOS on Gigabyte boards, and if you're in easy mode, it'll be right in the upper right hand corner. So it, it, it's hard. It, it's hard to miss. Um, some have stated that the X3D Turbo Mode is an official AMD spec. However, that's not true at other motherboard vendors, and this is going to suck. This is the sucky part of this, is other motherboard vendors are also working on their own iterations and implementations of it, so your mileage is going to vary there. And we all know what happens when motherboard makers are in control. My God, haven't we learned yet? Moving right along, this feature helps provide up to 35% uh, gaming performance with the upcoming chips by locking SMT and also locking in operations to a single CCD. So basically, I don't see how it's very useful on a six uh, on the eight core uh, 9800 X3D and the 7800 X3D. I don't see how it's very useful because it only it, it only has one CCD with 3DP cache. But when you get higher, when you get to the uh, 9900 X3D and the 9950 uh, X3D, that's where we're going to see the difference because then you can disable, this mode will disable the uh, non-cache CCD. While the biggest benefit of this feature will be seen on dual CCD. Now, that's what we're also looking for is the dual CCD 3D cache offering. Some users have also discovered nice gains in gaming with non-X3D chips and even single CCD X3D parts, such as the 7800 uh, 7, X3D and the 7600 X3D. Uh, Azeroc has this uh, firmware on its boards, and this is what the screen grab looks like. Uh, so Azeroc has it. Um, so... Um, there, let me pull up, let's see if I can pull up a Reddit thread real quick of this in action, because some people have already, um, do, 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 let me see right here. Nope. That's not it. Not a wrong thread. Um, I could have sp swore I responded to it. Let me look in my profile here. Because I did see I uh, right here. There we go. This is what I talk about. Uh, in this uh, Reddit thread, they uh, discuss it. And uh, I 
came in here and I said, all this does so far is disable s and and a non-cash CCDs on the 7900 X3D and 7950 X3D. And that's coming from what pe uh, people have already tested it on their gigabyte boards. Let's see what else. Uh, see what we pull up here. Yeah, the, there's the the ba basically the consensus in this uh, subreddit thread is uh, they didn't tell you what it does. <laughs> so, yeah, they left us. Uh, they just you know, here. They just threw it out there and said, "Here, experiment with us." Um, and then uh, made their claims. But uh, there is a. Let me see if I can pull up the thread from the gigabyte boards. Do, 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 right here. Uh, AMD, uh, anyway, uh, this is uh, in the Gigabyte subreddit. Anyone tried uh, Gigabyte's X3D Turbo Mode? I'm hesitant to try it out. Um, cryptopica, uh, cryptic, uh, cryptographer dude, <laughs> 4649 says, I haven't and I'm surprised. I haven't seen more reviewers do it yet or anything. I really want to know what it actually does. PC Master Builder said uh, he's tried it, and it seems to disable half the cores or disable SMT on my 7800X3D. I don't think it's meant for 8-core chips. It's probably meant for 12 and 16-core. Yeah, that's what makes sense to me. Um, Paper Street uh, Soap Guy says, I just updated and played Final Fantasy XIV for an hour while checking stats. No problems noted. Temps were about the same. Haven't run a benchmark, but will then. Uh, I want to play Alan Wake before I update it as well. Um, oh, let's see. Here's another one. On my 7950 X3D, it, it just disables SMT and the non-cash CCD. And the reply from uh, Vatixer says, it's like crippling the processor for no reason to have just a little bit of decreased latency. I would have bought a I would have bought a 7800X3D for that. I don't see how I don't see any reason to use it. I don't either. So hopefully some of the reviewers like uh, Paul's hardware and Jay's two cents and whatnot and Gamers Nexus can really uh, go into the weeds on what this thing actually does. Because so far it's not very impressive. And that's that's because we're trying it on our existing 3 dB cache CPUs, the 7000 series. We don't have a, a 9000 series to really look at it. Uh, so hopefully, hopefully they will do a deep dive and uh, let us know what in the hell is this. And uh, lastly for AMD, they're not done <laughs> with AM4. Three new CPUs have been revealed, the Ryzen 3 5300G, the 5600T, and the 5600XT. Okay, AMD is preparing all three of these, and uh, current BIOS, if you have the current beta BIOS for your AM4 board, these processors are probably already supported. Uh, they are on the MSI uh, B558 Pro with the latest uh, beta miles. They are supported there. Um, as reported by Momomo US on Twitter, apparently. No, that's, yeah, Twitter. AMD will launch an APU and three regular CPUs. These are the Ryzen 3 5300G for entry-level systems, boosting an IGPU, Ryzen 5 5600T, and the 5600XT. This isn't just a rumor. It's confirmed that the support for two of these chips have already been added. Yeah, the support for two of them are already there on uh, X570 and B550 chipboards. The only uh, CPU that is not supported on my uh, A Pro right now is this one right here, the 5600 XT. Uh, these are the Asus and MSI, yep, which have 5600T and XT additions added to the CPU support list. I didn't see it listed, and they have an MSI as um, they're dragging their ass on that. Uh, so I can't, I can't confirm if it is supported on MSI boards. 
Uh, the 5600 XT seems to be absent right here yep, from MSI support list, as I said. Uh, meanwhile, Gigabyte and ASRock haven't updated their CPU support list, but they might do so soon. On the other hand, previous motherboard chipsets like 300 and 400 motherboards aren't provided with the update at all. Uh, so, but are expected to provide full support to these CPUs. Yeah, they'll drag their ass getting BIOS updates for the 300 and 400 series because a lot of these vendors and a lot of these companies look at the AM4 boards as end of life. So they really drag their ass on providing BIOS updates for them. But anyway, the six, the 5600T will feature six cores and 12 threads and a base clock of 3.5 gigahertz and 32 megabytes of L3 cache. The 5600 XT will feature a higher base clock of 3.8 gigahertz, the same amount of L3 and a TDP of 65 watts. No specifications have been revealed about the 5300G, which should be a quad core featuring Radeon Vega graphics. The 5600T was already benchmarked on Geekbench 6, uh, 630, where the configuration shows that the motherboard was using the X570 AOS Pro. This means that the X570 boards from Gigabyte are, already have support for the new chips, but they just haven't, the, the websites haven't been updated yet. And what we're seeing here is a score of 2132 in single core and 9182 in multi core, which is about in the same range as the 5600X. The latter, however, features a higher base clock at uh, 3.7 gigahertz. The 5600 XT, on the other hand, will be 100 megahertz faster and should be the fastest 5600 series chip on four AM4 boards. The official pricing and availability hasn't been revealed. Um, not really sure when they're going to be released, but uh, they are preparing them. So, yeah, more uh, CPUs. The AM4 isn't dead yet. <laughs> it just uh, keeps on ticking. Um, if you like what you see here, ring the bell and subscribe to Gonzo Media. We will see you in the next one. Sorry about the length. I really didn't plan an 18-minute video, but it is what it is. See you next time.